Good evening, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask all present to please respect the instructions given by our parish ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a social distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times within the church. We will not have a collection at the offertory, but you can use the boxes provided at the entrance or exit of the church, or you can donate online at the parish website. Thank you for your continuing support as your donations help us with the operating costs of the Basilica. At the time of Holy Communion, further instructions will be given. And at the end of Mass, we ask that you please follow the usher's instructions for exiting from the church. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch. Our processional hymn is 563, Sing a New Song in the CPW. Kindly stand. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Singing alleluia. Rise, O children, from your sleep. Your Savior now has come. He has turned your sorrow to joy and filled your soul with song. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Singing My soul, for I have seen the glory of the Lord. The trumpet sounds, the dead shall be raised. I know my Savior lives. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And welcome again, everyone. Uh, at the beginning of all of our masses, our weekend masses during the Easter season, we reflect on our baptism, the baptismal call to be missionary disciples of Jesus Christ in our world today. That is a commandment for us. And uh, the Lord gives us the strength through the Holy Spirit to be courageous in uh, proclaiming his message in our daily lives. So this evening we will begin our mass with, with the blessing with uh, Easter water, as we normally do. And Reflect on our own baptismal call this evening. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people Bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Receive our prayer. You are 
seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him, brought him to the apostles, and described for them how on the road he had seen the Lord who had spoken to him and how in Damascus Saul had spoken boldly in the name of Jesus. So Saul went in and out among them in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He spoke and argued with the Hellenists, but they were attempting to kill him. When the believers learned of it, they brought Saul down to Caesarea, and sent him off to Tarsus. Meanwhile, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and was built up. Living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The refrain for the Psalm 22, Lord, from you comes my praise in the great congregation. Lord, from you comes my praise in the great congregation. comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live for comes my praise in the great congregation. All the ends of the earth 
earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down, before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. Lord, from you comes my praise in the great congregation. I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Lord, from you comes my praise in the great congregation. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. Whoever obeys his commandment abides in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. 
You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in them bears much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, into, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. And this fifth Sunday of Easter, the church reminds us that Christ is the true vine and we are the branches. As branches connected to the vine, I'm sure we don't have a lot of, you know, vineyards here, but if you go to Israel or parts of Ontario in the south and other places and see wineries, you see the work that goes on to keep, you know, them producing the fruit. As branches are connected to the vine, we are expected to bear good fruit in Christ. In today's first reading, one remarkable thing we see about St. Paul is that after his dramatic conversion on the road to Damascus, his life changed completely. Being now grafted to the vine, Jesus Christ, he immediately was transformed from Saul, the persecutor of the Christians, to Paul, the courageous preacher of the good news of Jesus Christ. He did this in spite of threats on his life and the suspicion by the Christians whom he had persecuted. He wasn't very welcome into the church because he had been a persecutor. People knew him, didn't trust him. So all of these things that happened to Paul, I believe, God used to prune him from his old ways, his former life. He had to examine his heart and see where he still needed to change, to convert. Conversion is not only a one-time thing, it's kind of a constant thing. He wasted no time in bearing fruit for Christ, though. He, the consequence of his true conversion and belief in Jesus was a great harvest of souls. As he spread the gospel to many parts of the Gentile world, into Greece, all the way into Turkey, in that part of the Roman Empire. Paul bore group fruit because he became a deeply connected and rooted branch in Christ, the true vine. In the second reading, John reminds us that as part of Christ the vine, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. By this you will know we are from the truth. So John here reminds us of the old saying that action speaks louder than words. We remain connected to Christ the vine by our works of charity and by our mercy towards other people. Today's gospel is a call to strengthen our relationship with Jesus Christ in order to continue to live with him. Like the relationship between a vine and the branches, no branch can have life or bear life on its own unless it is firmly grafted or attached to the vine. Likewise, in our spiritual life as Christians, we must firmly at be attached to Christ, the vine in whose name we have been baptized. We are all call, created, we're all called to remain in Christ for a purpose, and this purpose is to bear fruit that will last. To be in Christ means to live a life characterized by charity, peace, holiness, reverence for God, and love for God, especially in our neighbor. Today we look at our own faith journey today, we reflect on that. How is my relationship with Christ the true vine? Am I still living in him, attached to him? Have I borne good fruit in Christ by growing spiritually and affecting others positively? By becoming branches of the true vine, Jesus Christ, we became branches of the true vine, Jesus Christ, in baptism, and we reflected today on that. But we're also, you know, we can't do this on our own. We have to be grafted personally to Jesus, but we're also part of the community of the church, and we need Christ the vine in order to live as a group, and like the vine which needs the branches to bear fruit, fruit, Christ needs you and me, us, and depends on each of us 
to bear the fruit for the kingdom of God in this world. So personally, we are grafted to the vine, we are attached to the vine, but we're also part of the community which is attached to the vine. As vines need to be pruned each year so they can bear more fruit, so we as church need to be constantly cutting away all that keeps us from being closer to Jesus Christ so that we may do his work on earth. People know we as church are part of the vine by the love and care we have for one another. Many people ask today, why should I go to church? Why can't I just worship God in my own way? Can I just pray on my own? Isn't religion about my personal relationship with God? From the earliest times, following Jesus was not just a private, personal matter. From the very beginning, Christians came together in community. Jesus built a community of apostles and disciples. So it was never to be a solo thing. Christians came together in community to profess their faith in Christ Jesus, to witness to the resurrection, and to live by his teachings. Belonging to a community of faith enabled them to support one another in their journey of faith by praying and worshiping together and by loving service of one another in community. If Jesus is to have an effect on the world today, it is through us, his followers, living in such a way that people see the hand of God at work in our lives. We are Christ's hands, his feet, his voice, carrying the lamp of redemption to other people. All we have to do is to let Christ live in us, to remain attached to the vine of Christ, so that the fruit we bear is beyond imagining. We stand now and profess our faith in Christ Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We offer up our prayers now of intercession, asking God, our Heavenly Father, to hear and answer all the prayers we have in our hearts today. For Pope Francis, and for our Archbishop Peter, that they be sustained by God's grace in being voices for the voiceless through ministry that encourages and accompanies God's people throughout the world. We pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For unity within the church, that it may be a true community of missionary disciples of Jesus Christ, producing the fruits of mercy, love, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For global leaders, that they may respond to the global pandemic health crisis with a spirit of justice and a concern for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have wandered away from their practice of their faith and from the church community, that the Good Shepherd may lead them back home and that we may welcome them with open arms. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our community who are sick, for Dave Brenton, Pat Hayward, Anne Carew, Kevin Dormady, and Frank Doyle, that the healing power of the Holy Spirit may be upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this week, for Sister Corona Weiss, for Durham Dobbin. And we pray for all those who mourn the loss of a loved one, that they may find comfort and strength from gestures of affection and friendship given them during their time of sorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray now in the quiet of our hearts for our own intentions, our own needs at this Mass.
We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the grace and blessings you give us every day. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time of all to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. And therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
for on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your saints, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of those families gathered here, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, has said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your and we share the peace of Christ now with one another. Sins of the world have mercy on. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should come enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow towards the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by the ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ. Jesus took the bread he broke, Jesus shared the bread he broke, and said, do this, do this in memory of me. Jesus took the wine he poured, Jesus shared the wine he poured, said, do this, do this in memory of me. I am the vine, you are the branches, and all who live in me will bear Jesus took the bread he broke, Jesus shared the bread he broke, and said, do this, do this in memory of me. Jesus took the wine he poured, Jesus shared the wine he poured, and said, do this, do this in memory of me. I am the bread come down from heaven. 
heaven and all who eat this bread will have eternal life Jesus took the bread he broke Jesus shared the bread he broke and said do this, do this in memory of me. Jesus took the wine he poured. Jesus shared the wine he poured and said, do this, do this in memory of me. All who come to me shall not hunger, and all who come to me Jesus took the bread he broke, Jesus shared the bread he broke, and said, do this, do this in memory of me. Jesus took the wine he poured, Jesus shared the wine he poured and said, do this, do this in memory of me. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in to have instances of our virus in Newfoundland, so let us pray again to Mary for help and protection during the pandemic. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping our faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joys of the resurrection. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Just a reminder, as we said in the bulletin, take a bulletin, we had tonight uh, from 7 to 9, we have our monthly summit uh, where we have adoration and uh, of the Blessed Sacrament, confessions for those who would like to go, and beautiful modern music that uh, for people that is organized by our young adult group. So I appreciate anybody who would like to drop in for 15 minutes or half an hour tonight uh, or later on and uh, have, have some prayer and offer up a candle for someone you need to pray for today. 
As well, during the month of May, between 11 and 12, every day we have adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, plus a quarter to the hour, about 11.45, we'll have rosary. Pope Francis is asking all of us to pray the rosary every day for the end of the pandemic. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Have a great week. Our missioning hymn this evening, 544 in the CBW, O Sing to God a Joyful Song. O sing to God a joyful song, come all on earth and join the throng. Blessed are you, Lord, our Creator. You bring salvation day by day, both in our work and in our play. Blessed are you, Lord, our Creator. Alleluia, alleluia. All creation burst in song, sea, field, and forest teeming throng. We exalt you, living Saviour. Come, Holy Lord, and judge the earth. Oh, come in judgment now in birth. We exalt you. Say.